Good day, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic one. This is going to be your heroic guide, part one, tackling the entirety of the Elwyn Forest Zone. And we basically have a universal army for every single stage using the same five units and then subbing at one unit for each stage. I think I think two stages actually have a double up of some, uh, some feathery friends that are going to help you. So this is going to help people who are trying to do like punch a crosses into Elwyn Forest. Like you just unlocked the Hero campaign. You got level 11, maybe some 11, level 12 or 10 characters. You want to get in there. You want to get that gold. You want to get your talents right away. This is going to help you excel in doing that. My general advice for Elwyn Forest though is to go farm quests, go farm PVP, whatever you need to do. Build up your characters so that you can just bypass some of these pesky mechanics but even then we got some great tips for you on making this easy mode i hope you enjoyed the video if you do make sure you like share and subscribe without further ado let's jump into it so let's start with gold tooth for this first heroic guide video and as you can see i've actually gotten all of elwin forest done with all of the families on this baby account so right up the gate, I just want to say some of the units we're going to be using in practice now have actually out-leveled what they were when I first cleared Goldtooth. Uh, and that's probably what I should have waited for. I should have just waited a few extra days, leveled those characters up, and just walked over Goldtooth without having to come up with any strategy. But if you want some strategy nonetheless, that is what you will gain here. So when I was tackling Goldtooth with all five families, I used a universal family. When I say a universal family, what that means is... I used these six characters with every single family for this stage. So I used all six characters repeated uh, each and every time. We have the Quillbore, the Harpies, the Chickens, Blizzard, Safety Pilot with a Talon. Yes, this is a heroic guy. We will be using Talons. And I was able to get this Gnomish cloaking device completely free to play before I hit the heroic campaign. And then the Well Pleases. Now, full disclosure, since I hit the heroic campaign, I did go ahead and buy the arc like booster because i needed to farm these characters up to around level 11 uh to be able to stand a chance because otherwise characters just don't hit hard enough right so the very minimum thing you're going to want to do is grind up your characters to around level 11 but you don't need to do your leaders we will rarely ever play our leaders in this heroic campaign all right so let's get into the fights right now so there are a couple obstacles to face off against goldtooth but nothing crazy so the main obstacle is going to be a kobold that if he does mine these gold ord nodes, he's going to gain 10 levels. If he does that two or three times, your goose is cooked. That kobold is going to spawn in the top right corner right behind Goldtooth. Whenever we are expecting one to drop, we want to make sure we have a safe pilot and a blizzard. Uh, there is a timer on it. I'm not sure where the timer is, but there's also an audio warning. So when you hear that audio warning, just make sure you come up here and take it out. Even if you're dropping a blizzard on the one cobalt, that's perfectly acceptable. That four gold is fine to waste there. The other obstacles are going to be wolves, brutes. So the, uh, the, the, what are they called? The brutes, like hogger, anyway. And uh, earth elementals. And that's why we have harpies and chickens. Those chickens and harpies are going to tackle those units, but don't throw chickens at the brutes because there is an AoE cleave unless you're attacking them from behind. Otherwise, we're going to be taking care of the Griffin Raiders and just kind of focusing all our attention on getting our Kobold to snipe these gold pieces. And we're going to mostly ignore the right side. If we happen to take that tower, we can start launching our offensive from there. But we're not going to force that issue. We are controlling the Kobold, killing these very dangerous ground units, and getting all that gold. All right, so the first thing that's going to happen is going to be a wolf. We'll throw our... Quillbore, and then you see I safety pilot right away on that uh, kobold, and then bam, it's gone. We don't have to worry about that. Griffin Raider can get a couple pieces of damage in. We don't care. These Dark Spear Trolls, they suck, but I'm not going to waste my Blizzard. We'll save that. Let's get our kobold to start working his way up there. The chickens will take care of him. And we want to keep an eye on our base, make sure there's no Earth Elemental or Griffin Raiders that are getting sneaky. We should be seeing a kobold soon. We'll drop the Blizzard. That's perfect. We see that we now have the Earth Elemental. Don't really have anything to deal with that. I'll drop these eggs to meet our uh, wolf friend who's coming in. And I'll actually drop chickens too to deal with that. And there you go. So he's gone and we'll probably get a bunch of damage in on that tower. And that's fine too. We should be getting another kobold here any second. Let's throw our kobold down. And we did capture that right side. There he is. You hear the money, money, money. And that means it's go time. So as you can see, 
We're going to be ripping through this boss. We focused down the enemy kobolds. We took care of those ground units. And we're able to secure the easy win. And that's going to be it for this guide, guys. So that is one and done. You're going to use that universal army for all five families. You're going to collect that 300 gold paycheck at the end of your gold tooth experience and start trying to collect those valuable talents. If you want my advice, the gnomish cloaking device is the second most important talent. And the most important talent is those whelp flame burst talent. You want to rush those characters to uncommon, get those talents. We're going to be relying heavily on those for basically every single node of this guide well let's tackle mother fang next mother fang is going to be the second stage in ellen force and as you see i do have all those banners fortunately for us we do have another universal army we're going to use here uh, and i'm going to actually be using it again with hogger because he's my weakest leader he has the least slots and i even purposely removed my beasts from their slots so we're going to have blizzard save pilot torrent charger quillbore harpy and the whelp eggs You'll notice we have the same five characters from the gold tooth node but torrent charger is replacing those chickens and she is a very important character for this node as you'll find out when she takes out those squishy units so let's get into combat real quick and we'll talk about what this boss has in store for us so mother fang actually has quite a bit going on with her she does have these two uh, tracks one has higher elevation though and that's going to play a big factor into what we need to do because we're going to want to abuse that higher elevation to rain down with our range units on the enemies below. But there's more to it than that. We're gonna need to get this summoning stone so that we can deal with all the enemy range units coming on the left side. And that's where our Torin Charger is gonna be super important. She could take a hit from the Huntress, she could take a hit from the Dark Spirit Troll and the Pyromancer and then instantly kill them. Uh, I think it's instant kill at two levels higher. When I did this, it was even level, so it was one charge, one smack, and then those characters were gone. While we're doing that, we need to uh, stop the enemy from getting these gold ore. They will have three different mining characters. They have the dark, uh, dark iron miners, the harpies have the gold talent, and they have the regular kobolds. So we do need to deal with unbound uh, gold snagging, the harpies who snag gold super quickly, and then the regular kobold. All the while dealing with tanky wolves, <laughs> and then the hunters. You're gonna, you're gonna learn to hate wolves when we do this heroic campaign. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by gaining control of this top side and slowly work our dominance into the bottom track. We will probably be throwing some whelps down there to deal with wolves. We'll be throwing safety pilots on top of dark iron miners. We'll be putting blizzard on any sort of squads that we see. Also trying to tag the boss with any sort of damage we can as we go. This is very possible that we go all the way into the overtime where we're getting times two gold. Now, if you're lucky... And you've been paying attention to the advice every single content creator has been giving out. You need to get Flame Burst on your Whelps. Flame Burst on your Whelps would make this node so much easier because you could drop your Whelps on top of a Pyroblaster. You could drop your Whelps on top of a Huntress and instantly kill that unit, depending on your level, of course. I don't have that talent yet. That talent is waiting for me in the shop. I'm going to show you how to do it without that so that you know it's possible. Because obviously there's a bit of RNG getting your Whelps upgraded. Uh, and on this first stage, we're not going to assume talents. Uh, but when we get to Westfall, you're going to need to get start getting some talents. The Heroic Campaign is called the Heroic Campaign for a reason. All right, let's get to some gameplay. So for our opening, let's go ahead and throw the Harpies in. And let's throw a Blizzard on top of the boss, the Dark Iron Miner, and the Dark Spirit Troll. So get a bunch of damage in. And we get a kill there as well. Let's go ahead and take her out. Uh, nope, she's going to take out my guys. Let's throw the Quillbore behind and start getting some damage in there. All right, we'll throw a Kobold down. Unfortunately, she's super dead. And now I wish I could summon my Torrent Charger. Oh, I can. The safety pilot did a great job. So we'll throw in our Torrent Charger. She's going to take care of the tank. She's going to go ahead and grab that summoning stone. And then it gets down to uh, the game plan where we're going to control this left side. We can't let the get mine off, but I'd love to see a range unit pop up first. There's one. We'll deal with that. I'll go ahead and throw the miner, and I'll throw Kobold yet again. Not in time. So the boss does a poison pool, so range units are not safe. But you saw that Pyromancer that could have been a big pain was taken out by the Torin Charger. Now, we do have a Dark uh, Spear Troll we need to worry about, but that'll be a problem for another time. We'll drop another Blizzard as soon as we get the gold. The 
I would rather take out this Dark Spear Troll than just hit damage on the boss, which unfortunately I failed to do. So we're going to be losing those whelps that would have been great to take out that uh, wolf, but we seem to be okay. We'll use our quill board to turn this pyromancer around and save our safety pilot. The old turnaround combo. That's why we love quill board so much. Uh, well, not not quite enough damage there. All right, so we're going to need to kind of uh, re-establish ourselves. Let's start with a torn charger a little bit further back. A kobold on the wall. And then when we get our blizzard, we'll take out that unit and our torrid will re-establish control. We can't throw all our units into the bottom track because of what you just saw. That Dark Spirit Troll just absolutely yeeting our characters. So because we got a little bit too overzealous with our attack, we might have to take a bit of damage on our tower. What I'll try and do is I'll get my safety pilot to do a little bit extra damage. And that's going to be great. Now, that Poison Pool will kill our pilot if she were to walk in there, so I'll throw a Quill Board behind to pull aggro off, and we'll see if we can accomplish something else here. So you see, we relinquished control. We got a little overzealous, and it's going to cost us. Lots of spiders coming our way. We're going to lose this Summoning Stone unless the Blizzard can get the job done. The blizzard gets the job done. Fantastic. Safety Pilot will do the rest on these two. And we might have reestablished our control here, so that's great. Now, she's in stealth, so that's fantastic. Let's get a quill board to pull aggro. Unfortunately, those harpies... We get into a harpy on harpy battle. And we, we won. Technically, we won. So now, we are going to slow it down. We're going to use our brain. We'll wait till we see enemies. It doesn't matter if we get to 10 gold. We want to react to what the enemy does. We got a Huntress coming in. This is perfect. It's going to really illustrate the power of the charger throw her in the attack comes in and bam the headbutt into the attack and now we can do a bunch of damage so let's try and see where an enemy comes from there's our harpies we were waiting for them they were will of course destroy our tauren but we waited it out we dropped the blizzard and now we're just dropping all the damage on this boss and this is a wrap so that's how i handled mother fang especially having uh, no talents at the time now my characters are higher level when i first did it it did take quite a few attempts, but that Torrent Charge was instrumental. And the other five units we used, well, get familiar with their gameplay. If you want to soar through the Heroic Campaign, they are vital, vital in a lot of different nodes. Now, we're not always going to use all five of them, because once we start pushing higher, we do need to start looking at our army upgrade slots. But they're very, very Next on the docket is the Dockmaster. That's right. So we're going to be doing our third Heroic Guide here. On the Dock Master. Now, we do ha fortunately have a universal family yet again. And once again, we're going to be using our Hogger for the gameplay just because he is the weakest. We're never going to use him. We don't have to try and finagle the spots to try and artificially lower our level. We just get to do it naturally here. So, our universal army means, once again, we will be using these six pieces with every single family, regardless of leader, to deal with this boss. So, we have Blizzard, Safe Pilot, Execute. Quillbore, Harpies, and the Whelp Eggs. And you'll notice we have five familiar faces from the last two heroic guides. And now we have a new one, Execute. Now, Execute is going to be very, 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 very valuable in the uh, heroic campaign here. So the reason Execute is great is because we are able to two-shot very meaningful enemy units. However, this is level dependent. I want to show my level 9 execute in action because I'm not going to be able to 2-shot them. I'm going to have to 3-shot them, and we'll show you how that changes things. But if you can just farm your execute up more, that'll greatly help you in this stage. All right, let's get down to some gameplay. All right, so for Doc Master, the big difference is we now have two ogres throwing barrels at us. So if we scroll up, you'll notice there is an empty space behind each ogre, but that's going to get filled with five barrels that they're going to roll down the map about to where the summoning stone uh, starts towards the boss. Uh, if that hits your melee units, that is it. It's a wrap. But once they throw their five barrels, they still path across each other, which gives us an opportunity to drop an execute on the two ogres and hit the boss for lots of damage. And this is going to be the main mechanic we're going to employ to negate the enemy mechanics. And that's basically all we're going to do to the boss. Everything else we're going to do is to defend our tower and to get as much gold on our side as possible. 
We will not get greedy. We are not going to drop undown units on the boss unless it is a sure kill. Because if we get far behind, the super tanky units the enemy has will overrun us. That's another thing. If I get the opportunity to drop an execute on one ogre, the boss, and one of these stone golems, I might do that instead to help my harpies and my whelpling eggs get through these super tanks before they start beating on our base. And you also have to watch out for the earth elementals back door in you. They are really funny at that, the AI. All right, let's do some fighting. So we got a, a kobold right away. I'm going to go ahead and drop the save pilot. We don't play that game. Save pilot's dead. I don't really care. I'll even drop a blizzard on the pyromancer here. Getting a couple bit of damage on the other bosses. And now I'll throw my kobold in over here. You can see right away we start getting backdoored. And we're going to wait till they start crossing past. They cross past about every 30 seconds or so. So you see some nice damage in on them, but we will need to do three times. We'll drop some whelps on top of this obsidian. But do remember, he has a talent that explodes. So we don't want to summon our kobold just yet. That would be really bad. Let's answer the enemy kobold though. And now let's start getting some, uh, some gold for us. Around 2.30, we want to have another execute ready. Not sure if that's going to be possible or not, though. I'll take some damage on the base in order to drop the execute there. Once the ogre gets in range and starts his attacks, that's when you summon your harpies. Do not summon your harpies until this ogre is doing his attack. Otherwise, you will get yourself killed. Now, hopefully, we're going to be able to stop at least one of the gold pieces here. I don't think we will, so I'm not going to push the issue. I'll simply let that kobold get that uh, three gold pieces, and we will just reevaluate how to uh, catch up. All right, let's go ahead and throw the safety pilot here. That should take out the kobold, the fire hammer, and now we can start working down uh, the other enemies here. Let's try and get that gold or no, that gold ore there. Take out the enemy kobold. Let's get rid of that golem there. They should be crossing past any second now, and we'll have an execute ready to go. And there it is. So now we've negated the mechanics of the fight. Uh, we no longer have to deal with those barrels. We just got to deal with these tanks coming at our base. But now we can kind of free range our execute. And all we need to worry about is the boss's insane range. But otherwise, we can start getting some offensive out there. Don't get greedy, though. We still have a minute left. We still got to deal with backdooring. We can simply get gold. We can simply play it safe. And we can get this win that way. Let me drop an execute on this elemental right here. Let me try and turn my kobold away. Uh, but he is not so lucky. We're going to wait till we get some gold. Let's answer that kobold right here. Unfortunately, they die. Let's get rid of you. I'll even drop a blizzard clipping the boss whenever possible. There we go. We got rid of that ogre. Oh, unfortunately, we did lose that summoning stone. Let's go get all this nice gold up here. We want to drop Whelpling Eggs, but we don't want to do it too close to the boss because the range on this boss is nutty. Let's drop an Execute there. Help take the boss down a peg. We'll try and save our Kobold. We did a good job there. And now we're about to get into the double gold phase where we're going to be able to start spamming some nice, fun abilities here. All right, let's hit him with the blizzard. Let's hit him with the execute. And you can see now why I wanted to just play it safe, wait till I had this double gold time, because we just ripped through this boss, and these tanks, they move too slowly. So because we just kept them under control the whole time, they don't become a threat to us in this final stage. And there you go, guys. That's Doc Master. It's not always that pretty. Uh, it, but it can be even prettier if you have a stronger execute to help deal with those big tanks. Doing stage four, Morgan the Collector of Elwyn Forest. This one is a really fun one. As you can see, I've beaten all five families. And again, luckily for us in this Elwyn Forest stage, we have a universal army to tackle Morgan the Collector. We have Blizzard, Safety Pilot, Banshee, Quillbore, 
uh, Harpies and our Whelplings. Now, these six units we will be using deep, deep, deep into the campaign. So any levels you put on any of them will not be wasted. But again, we have five familiar faces with our Blizzard, with our Safe Pilot, our Quillbore, our Harpies, and our Whelp Eggs. This is a fun one, and don't blink because it'll be over quickly. Let's go talk about this boss. So Morgan the Collector is a very straightforward heroic node. We're going to have these two giant, hard-hitting Defias bandits that are protecting him. That when they get engaged, they will then charge your base and absolutely annihilate your face and any units you send at them. They are weak to squad units, and they're weak to mind control, so we could actually Banshee steal them. Besides them, we're going to be dealing with chickens in crates, some murlocs, footmen soldiers, but... I'm about to show you one of the coolest cheese moments we can do in this game, but not the only cheese moment for ba Banshees. In this heroic campaign guide, you will find a lot of cool things we're going to do. All right, so let's go ahead and just start the gameplay because there's not much to talk about once you see what we're doing. Right away, we're going to drop an unbound unit on the enemy here. That's going to proc him to run at us uncontrollably. Now, he is much faster than all of his allies. And what we want to do is we want to let him get all the way to our tower. And once he gets to our tower and takes his first swing, we throw the Banshee down. He is now under our control. Let's go ahead and take these chickens out. And once we get some whelp eggs, we'll help take those footmen out. And the next thing I'm going to do, this is the really funny part. I'm going to drop a quill bore and aggro this one as well. Now you see I have the Banshee ready. Just need some gold to get it. And watch this enemy do work. So we, we aggro the enemy so that ours wouldn't have to fight this one. But we're also going to mind control him as well. So as soon as he gets on the tower and does a swing, our base can take it. There's the mind control. And here's what's happening up here. Now this Defias Bandit might be able to solo Morgan the Collector. But on the off chance he can't, I'm going to go ahead and throw this Bandit some love. And it's as simple as that, guys. This is probably going to be the fastest heroic guide video out there. Uh, so let me know if this was enjoyable, if it was funny, and if it helped you cheese this fight. Get that 300 gold and start pushing your talents. All right, guys. We're going to finish off Elwyn Forest strong up against the leader of Elwyn Forest, Hogger. And we're going to do some Hogger on Hogger violence. So let's look at the army we're going to be using for this. And it might look familiar. This is the army we used up against Goldtooth as well. So we're going to be using our Hogger just because he's our, our weakest leader. And we're going to have Blizzard, Safe Pilot, Chickens, Quillbor, Harpies, and our Dragon Whelps. This is going to be a very interesting one. It is very fast-paced, and if it goes well, it's going to be very short, uh, which makes it very nice because if you need to do multiple attempts, at least it's short. Let's go look at the map. So Hogger is a very, very fast-paced level because of this three-pack right here. We got two Warsong Raiders and a Huntress coming at us fast and furious. And they will destroy your tower if you're even level in about five seconds or so. So you need to immediately deal with that, but it doesn't end there because they respawn in very quickly. Now you think once you take them out, you can maybe safe pilot these Murlocs and tackle Hogger head-on. But these Murlocs resummon in about one second, and they're right back on you throwing arrows. So, our strategy is to take out these three units, go down here, take out the tower on the left, and we're all going to die at this point. Everybody's going to die, but we will have control of the tower. We're going to let our gold build up, and we're going to send one big attack over at Hogger. We're going to try and pull Hogger over here to the tent, so that we are able to clear him down without... The enemy Huntress who respawns down this path, or this enemy Murloc messing us up. All the while, we're going to be having to worry about Pyromancers one-shotting our chickens, Dark Spear Trolls killing our Harpies, and the Obsidian Stone Golem, if he dies, exploding, killing all of our units. So, let's get in here and let's do some fights. So, first things first, they start approaching. We're going to drop a Blizzard, and as soon as that Hunter starts attacking... Whether you have Harpies on spawn or you have Chickens, you're going to want to drop one of them because they peel through the enemies the fastest. Then our Chickens will start heading up and you'll see our base cannot sustain another one of those attacks. We start heading up and as soon as the Chickens turn the corner, we throw in our, our uh, Quillabore and then we're going to throw in some extra attacks. But we're not going to summon in our, uh, our Harpies right now. 
That'd be a little bit overkill. We need to get control of this tower without using too, too much. So we'll go ahead and throw more chickens at it. They'll take care of this. And now we'll get the base back and we have a little bit of an army left over. We're going to let our gold replenish. There will be an enemy huntress summoning in soon. So we're not going to be able to take too much time. And this didn't work out for us. So as you see, they resummoned in a bit too quickly. Looks like we had a little bit of bad RNG on our chickens getting taken out. So let's go ahead and restart. Like I said, this is a fast-paced node. You're either in and out with a quick W or a quick L. And that's the way we like it on these punch crosses. Which really, really illustrates what I said at the beginning of each and every one of these guides. You are so much better off treating Elwyn Forest as your jump-off point for free 1,500 gold by simply farming your characters to level 13, level 14, bypassing all the mechanics, using your favorite characters and getting through it. Now, if these happen to be some of your favorite characters, great. That's going to be really beneficial as all these characters are usable in the future heroic campaigns. But you don't need to force this issue. I'm doing this on a punch across because I'm a psychopath making content, right? All right, as soon as they get close to us, we'll drop this blizzard yet again. And when that hunter starts attacking, we're going to drop our chickens. The Huntress is gone. We'll take out these Warsong Raiders. I'll throw my Kobold a little bit earlier this time. And I will throw the Quill Board now. And I'm going to throw the Safety Pilot right here as well. As soon as Blizzard is available, I'll throw that as well. As soon as Blue Stacks decides to cooperate. Now we have the base, so no Pyromancer coming in. We got it faster this time. But all of our characters died. That's perfectly fine. We still have a little bit of time left as there's only one Warsong Raider. Now two. We're going to let our gold get a little bit higher. And then I'm going to start summoning some units. We're at nine. Let's do chickens. Let's do harpies. And let's pull the boss right up here. And now I'm going to wait. And we're going to see if we get a uh, Pyromancer summon in. Perfect. Pyromancer is gone. We did not pull the ire of the boss. Or of the huntress rather. And now we're able to take out the hogger. And you see, none quickly enough. So that is the punch across. That's how the strategy works. I did do that with all five of my families. Each one took about two or three attempts. But in a lot of the other armies, I had army slots that gave my safety pilot an extra level. Gave my harpies an extra level. And then I was able to kind of trivialize the note a little bit. So once again, I hope these guides helped you. But for Elwyn Forest, I do recommend just out-leveling it. Just out-level it. You could use these strategies while out-leveling it and just completely demolish it. And that'll get you your 1,500 gold where you can start hunting for your first talents that you're going to use for many, many heroic campaign nodes down the line. Which we're going to do videos for all of them. Um, I would strongly suggest the Well Plains plus Flame Burst. That should be your main priority with your gold. Followed by your... Your safe pilot with your gnomish cloaking device. I just so happened to get that one early here. Free to play. I just got it through the sigil system. And then the, the gnomish cloaking device was there. And once you have those two, we can have some more fun. We can do some more interesting characters. And maybe we'll start talking about talents that we're going to be using as we go through this heroic campaign on the baby account. Alright guys, as always, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know how you like the format of this video. It's cool if we could do universal armies for like an entire zone like we can with Elwyn Forest, because then I could put them all into one video. When we start getting to the higher uh, heroic difficulty nodes, it might be an entire video for one node, like Ungoro Crater, for instance, tackling that uh, the Devil Star. I'm using very specific family-based characters in their slots to try and get through it. And it's so difficult that even punching down is hard. So that's going to require a full video for that, showing five fights for the five families. And it'll get a little bit wonky there, I guess. Uh, but let me know what you guys want. Do you want it to be like this all the time? Just the zones, kind of the, the base approximation of what's happening. Show a little bit of footage from each family in action. Something like that. Uh, you guys decide and we'll go from there. And have yourselves a great day. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.